functions are often difficult. Think for example of the cosine of the square root of x squared plus 1. Polynomials like x squared or x cubed, on the other hand, are much easier. That is why we often try to approximate complicated functions by an easier polynomial, a sum of some powers of x. We will encounter one problem though. We will need an infinite number of terms in our sum to approximate some functions accurately. We need a series with powers of x. Such a series is called a power series. In this video you will learn more uh, uh, you'll see precisely what it is and you will also see some basic properties. So, we have a series, sum, and from 1 to infinity a n. And now the a n are powers of x. More precisely, the a n are coefficients c n times x minus a to the power n, where a is some constant. This a is called the center of the power series, and c n are the coefficients of the power series, and our x will be a variable. We have now series which contains a parameter x, uh, but not some in some arbitrary way. They are the terms are of the form cn coefficient times powers of x. So let's take a look at some examples. What's a power series and what is not? Well, we have our first example: x minus 3 to the power n divided by n squared. And we recognize that this is of the form the cn times x minus h to the power n, and we pack as our a this 3 over here. And the, we can write this as 1 over n squared times x minus 3 to the power n, so the cn coefficients are 1 over n squared. In this case, we have a power series. Let's look at the second example. Looks a bit different, looks a lot easier. Uh, where is our a? Well, we can take any parameter. If we so our a is in this case just 0. So we have uh, x minus 0 to the power n becomes x to the power n. So that's nice. Where well, are the cn? I just have x to the power n. Well, that's even better. Uh, we have all the time 1 times uh, x to the power n. So all our cn are just 1. So this example is also an example of a power series, a bit easier, where all coefficients are 1 and the center is 0. Let's look at the next series. Example 3. We have an x here, but it is inside a cosine. So in this case, we have a series containing, containing a parameter x, but we don't have a series with powers of x. That means that this series is not a power series. In fact, it is also a very important series. It's a Fourier series, but we'll encounter that later. That's a, another important type of series, but that's for later. And example 4, uh, sum uh, n from 1 to infinity 1 over n squared. Well, you know this series very well, of course, from all the, uh, it's a P series from all the uh, videos we did before. But it does not uh, contain powers of x, so the last two are not power series. Now we want to know when does the series converge. Well, the series, the terms contain x's, so the convergence will depend on x. So let's try to establish when our series converges. Let's do the second one. Our a n equals x to the power n. And we see power, so ratio test is probably nice. So let's try to do the ratio test with this series. Our a n plus 1 equals x to the power n plus 1. So the quotient a n plus 1 over a n equals just x. And then for the ratio test, we have to take the absolute value and to take limit n to infinity. Well, this limit is not necessary because uh, the quotient doesn't depend on n anymore. Uh, so our limit is just the absolute value of x. And then we know, the ratio test tells us, that if this limit is smaller than 1, then my series converges absolutely. So if absolute convergence if x absolute is smaller than 1, or that means that x has to be between minus 1 and 1. I know the ratio test tells me that my series diverges if this limit is bigger than 1. So if the absolute value of x is bigger than 1, so x either smaller than minus 1 or bigger than 1, then my series diverges. And I don't know what ha is happening for x absolute value equals to 1, so x equals plus 1 or minus 1. But hey, two values of x, I can just plug them in and see what happens. 
If x equals 1, and I plug it in over here, I get the series 1 to the power n, so 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. That will diverge. And if I plug in minus 1, then we get the series of minus 1 to the power n. I get 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1. So that will diverge as well. So in this case, those two will diverge as well. So now to last names. The uh, set of all x's for which my power series is converging is called the interval of convergence. In this case, we have convergence for x between minus 1 and 1 and divergence everywhere else. So that's why the interval of convergence is the interval minus 1, 1 without the boundary, so open brackets. And then last term, the distance from the center to one of the boundaries, so the center is 0, boundary is either 1 or minus 1, so this distance from center to boundary is 1, and that's called the radius of convergence. So in this case, the radius of convergence equals 1, because from the center to the boundary, I have a distance of 1. doesn't matter whether you go to the right or to the left boundary, of course, here. So that's called the radius of convergence, distance from the center to the boundary. So uh, now, we have the, uh, now we have seen the basics of what a power series and the basic names. And in later videos, we will see some examples.